Welcome to an example in which we're solving absolute value greater than, let me write it down here for us, 3x plus 5 absolute value greater than or equal to 7. So how do we do it? Well, I refer you to, again, the exam one notes. Here they are. This is the exam number one notes. And I got this off the notes here. So notice it's absolute value less and absolute value greater. So ours, notice, is absolute value greater. So we're this side. So what do you do? Um, step one, get the absolute value piece alone and then break it into, well, actually, greater, greater than breaks into two inequalities. And then three, we uh, solve for x. Solve for x. Um, okay, so that's, that's the plan. So step number one. Number one, I'll write over here. Get the absolute values alone. But they already are alone. See that? So you mean if there was like a, a 5 plus 4 times that, we'd have to get rid of that stuff. You know, we'd have to subtract 5 from both sides, and we'd divide by 4 to get rid of that. You know, we, we don't have to do any of that on this one. The absolute value already is alone. So, all right, so we go on to step two. What's step two? So step two, here here's greater than breaks into two inequalities with an or. So we're on this greater than side. So see, so for the less than side over here, it breaks into a triple. But for the greater than side, it breaks into two with an or. So we take the exact thing we have, and then we notice we switch the symbol and put a negative, and then over here we have it the same. Right? See, this one is exactly the same, but we've removed the absolute values, right? And here, it's um, opposite direction on the symbol, negative on the right side. One more time. You take that, so, so on the, here it's exactly the same, no changes. Same symbol, same number. Over here, it's the negative number, and the symbol goes the other way. And both of them no longer have the absolute value. It's been removed. Okay, so that's what we do. So you got you can have that on your notes on the exam. That that form really really matters. So over here we do the um, the negative seven and we turn the symbol the other way. Or then over here, it's a funny arrow there. We do the exact same thing. Oops. Is that making sense? So we have that absolute value like that. Yeah. Now, now why? I, I like to. I don't want to just give this like it's, you know, completely magic. Why? Why? Why is that? Well, it's just true. Think about it. What if I said I think of a number? The absolute value of my number is greater than or equal to two. What if I told you that? What if I said, Hey, I'm thinking. Let's play a game. I'm thinking of a number, and the absolute value of it comes out greater than or equal to two. What could that number be? Well, it could be 2 or 3 or 4, et cetera, right? Could be that number could be 2, 3, 4, et cetera. That, then the absolute value would be greater than or equal to 2. But what else could it be? It could also be negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, on down you go, right? Could also be that number because the absolute values would turn it positive, right? Like negative three, the absolute value would be positive three. That would be greater than or equal to two. So if you think about it, it's negative two or lower. That's what we're saying here, right? Less than or equal to negative two or, or these numbers, which are greater than or equal to positive two. So you see how it's less than or equal to the negative or greater than or equal to the positive. Less than the negative, less than the negative or greater than the positive. Do you see how that's reasonable? That's true. That's what absolute value means. That's what the number inside can be. The number inside can be less than or equal to the negative or greater than or equal to the positive. That's just reasonable and true and logical. Spend time looking at that. It'll make more sense. Okay. So uh, now, uh, so, so break. So what? Well, let's just say remove. The absolute values, write negative or positive, and you write less than or equal to, greater than or equal to positive. Right. Okay. Now, now step three, which is solve, solve both for x, right? So we just come in here and go, okay, here's the wall, 
and let's just solve it for x. Let's subtract 5 from both sides. And we get 3x less than or equal to minus 12. Divide by 3. x less than or equal to negative 4. Then over here, um, what am I going to do? I am going to subtract 5 from both sides. And what do we got here? That's 2. And x is greater than or equal to 2 thirds. There's my. Now, what, how do you. They want interval notation. How do you give that as an interval notation answer? What, what does that mean? Well, less than or equal to negative 4, if you think about it on a number line, you don't have to do a number line, but it might help you. So solid dot here. Here's negative 4. Let me add a little room for us. There we go. Um, less than goes this way, doesn't it? X is less than. So that means it goes from negative infinity to negative 4. So this would be negative infinity. Always a parenthesis on negative infinity. And then the bracket on the negative 4. Why? Because we have the equals. You can equal negative 4, so you can be straight on the negative 4. But you're never equal to infinity or negative infinity. Those always get parentheses, don't they? Because you can never be straight on infinity or negative infinity. Right? You're just around them. That's why it's rounded. You're not straight on it. Okay, how about the other one over here? It's going to be the same kind of thing. And we'll just say, okay, two-thirds is our spot, solid dot, and we're greater, greater. Where's greater stuff? Greater numbers are to the right, aren't they? Going up to infinity, so that's bracket, two-thirds to infinity, and again, parenthesis on the infinity, parenthesis on the infinity, like that, because, again, you can never be straight on infinity. Now, what do we do in between these? We've got to put a U in between these. we got to put a U. So um, that's going to be the answer. Now, now, the U might be confusing for you. Let me show you. I probably should have already had this up, up and at them. Let me go there real quick while you watch without using too much of your time. Let me uh, do this. Here we go. All right. It's going pretty quick. So 2.7, boom, and the lecture homework, boom, this is number 7, and right there. It's about to pop up, I think. Yeah, good, okay, so I want to show you, now mine, this is a different question, but, I mean, it's the same one, I'm doing the same question, basically, but I just want to show you the palette, like, like where the U thing is, I want to show you where the U thing is. So look here for a minute. So I just I just clicked in there. I'm going to type in an answer. The answer will be something like this. You're going to go, if you if you go over here, see interval or no, uh, what is it? Function trig interval. There it is. There's the U. See the U. So when you first click on the palette, you're in basic. You go all the way over to interval. And what is my first interval? It's going to be this kind of interval. Parenthesis, right? Negative infinity, and then. Um, I don't know how to get my keyboard back up. Um, um, well, anyway, you'll be able to do it on yours. I don't know why I'm having trouble. But I just wanted to show you the U. That's really all I'm here to do is show you the U. So go over to Interval. There's the U. Mine's totally crazy and in the wrong place because I don't know where my little keyboard went. I'm kind of technological child. There's a bunch of U's. Boom, boom, boom. There they are. So there's the U. Where do you find them? When you click on the palette, Basic, go all the way over to interval. That's where you'll see the U that you're going to put in the middle. Okay, I think you've got it. You're better with tech than me, I'm sure. So that's how you get the U in the middle, and there's the final answer they want on that question.